What an amazing time to be alive. Indeed, taking into account the good and the bad, we recently discussed Kanye West and his alleged transformation or conversion. Though I have chosen to stay objectively indifferent to the issue, I still can see the positive aspects to this possible ruse. When the youth begin to talk about Christ in a way that would have never otherwise, I cannot help but support this. And now it seems as if he wants to run for president. Though this pushes me more to my initial thoughts on the matter, that of his clear battle with subclinical narcissism, I remain open-minded to what fruits could come indirectly of this all. Overall, I suppose I am much less concerned with the goings-on of Kanye as a person than I am the faith in which he claims new discovery. A new form of Christianity seems to be on the horizon. Some will call it the emerging church or progressive Christianity. And all this is true. Uh, but could this possibly be the hodgepodge Jesus figure of progressivism that Kanye is truly following? Will he speak up against the watering down of the faith and its tenets? Will he speak against the pink hand that seems to be flipping our society, culture, and values on its head? A clear battle for dominance and suppression opposed to what we are told. The fight for equality and inclusion, as they say. It appears as though there is a battle to malign the foundation of Christian values in the mainstream. Now, we all know this has been going on for generations. Even scripture describes a falling away and popular support of false doctrine. Today, there seems to be a new battle, significant to the era, one being forged on the political field, and namely through the Republican Party via conservatism. A post-Trump conservatism that we are now being fed through establishment organizations like TPUSA, for instance. Whereby this new conservatism goes hand in hand with alternative lifestyles like homosexuality or transgenderism. Not that the Republican Party is legitimate or federal politics in general, but the fact that Christianity as a faith and not a religion is being lumped into this movement is of greatest concern. If the Christian faith is the root of conservative value systems, yet conservatism of 2019 aims to convince you postmodern inclusion is also a part of the value system, what type of Christianity are they following? And surely is not that of the Holy Scriptures. Homosexuality said that there's a place for the gay agenda within the conservative movement. Uh, and you're also comfortable with transgenders and cross-dressers, I understand. Um, is there any point where conservatives should take a moral stance on Christian morality, or should we abandon it altogether? So in other words, what is your brand of conservatism doing to actually conserve Christian morality? If we're ceding to the left on transgender, gay rights, gay marriage, we don't want that in conservatism. So you don't want him in the conservative movement? I just want to be very clear. Let's just be... So, so you don't, so you don't. Now one could argue that mainstream conservatism has never truly subscribed to Christianity proper. And I would concur. But I would also add that conservative politics have assisted in keeping Christian values culturally relevant. Basically, Christianity as an organized religion is much less important than the Christian faith and value system that has been a root of our culture, even if it does not appear so on its surface. And it is true to say that the political arena has played a major part in keeping our culture foundationally Christian. In theory, of course, not so much in practice. Why is this important? Because uh, when Christian values have cultural power, they have political power, power to affect policy. If a Christian-based culture protects the family, that culture will influence policy that protects the family as well. 
This not only secures a place within society for the devout Christian, but it also safeguards society from being endangered by postmodern degeneracy. What we are discovering today is that Christian values are being skewed to fit a new type of culture, an amoral, relativistic, anti-Christian culture. The ironic part about this all is that it is being formed through the conservative party, almost as if under the orders or by the influence of the intolerant left. Now those in the know are aware of the fact that there does not exist a true right or left, yet a double-sided coin-op system of global factions that are systematically fulfilling Agenda 2030 initiatives under the guise of federal conservative versus liberal politics. The point is, no longer are conservative values truly different from liberal ones. Now, specific policy may be a place of contention, say open borders and closed, or pro-life and pro-choice, pro-gun, anti-gun, etc. But what happened to values? Those questions that regard morality. What is true? What is not? What is objectively wrong and objectively right? Acceptable and unacceptable, normative and abnormal. And not by a law. It isn't a point to make homosexuality illegal, for instance, but by virtue. Meaning such acts may be permissible by law, yet abnormal by deed and unacceptable by virtue. A theocracy is not and has never been the issue, but a virtuous meritocracy is. One that is built on the Christian morale and the Christian morale only. Not to say every American is to be of the Christian faith, but the Christian faith is the foundation for the cultural value system of America, just as Japan has their cultural value system, India, Poland, and the others. From nowhere else has America gleaned its values other than Christianity. But what we find is that postmodernism, tech company leftism and liberal entertainment has obfuscated this idea. And now conservatism is also getting a cultural makeover. There is no better time for Americans to assess what they truly believe in. Yet we find the two parties bickering over red herring policies and cultural controversies, all the while completely disregarding the moral foundation required to make accurate and logical judgments on said issues. Here we locate the node in which the deception is expressed. While the two-party system wages war between its citizens over social issues and public policy, it slowly erodes society's capacity for stable values by incrementally maligning them beneath its nose. In short, we are witnessing the slow wholesale removal of Christian values in America by way of the political system and the new culture that is influencing it. Moreover, while the nominally Christian conservative culture of old is slowly being phased out by the post-Trump progressive right, Christianity as a cultural basis for values is also being phased out in the process. This is directly why you will find as a cultural norm, your child with bearded ladies in libraries, forced injections of toxins, and 24-7 access to adult entertainment. While conservatism is becoming something else, something different, and away from the moral base that built it, Christianity as a default foundation for morality and virtue is disappearing from the country it allegedly founded. What we find here is that the only way to complete the globalization of Earth and postmodern technocracizing of the United States is to remove the cultural influence of Christianity from America. Not simply the faith as a whole practiced by a percentage, but the objective truths and values therein that keep culture as a whole in some sense of linear direction, a narrowing path within reason, righteousness, and logic. 
without an orderly foundation of truth to ground it, culture will become rabid, and society will take on all the elements of a dystopia that science fiction films have been promising us for generations. The removal of Christian ideals and morality as we know it is at hand, and we are witnessing the process of this removal, not only through Hollywood and the music industry, or even leftism, but directly through the new conservative movement of the monumental year, 2020. The American Xanatos Gambit. 